There are scientists who work for processed food companies and for fast food companies, and their job is to figure out the most addictive combination of salt, fat, sugar, whatever it takes to make it so that if someone tastes it, they cannot stop, and then once they're done, they cannot stop thinking about it and they want to come back. I really struggle with the addictive qualities of inflammatory foods like dessert or chips. The dopamine hit is hard to resist. What advice can you offer to help us turn away? This is something that I work with people on every day, especially in rapid recovery, because we're working every single day to help people overcome their addictions and make the good choices, right? And to do it enough times in a row to create a new behavior and a new thought pattern and a new addiction to health, right? But in the beginning, it's very difficult. So one of the things you have to make peace with is that you can't have even a taste of what you're addicted to while you're trying to recover. You can't. So the first step in overcoming an addiction is admitting you have an addiction. Have you ever been to AA or Narcotics Anonymous or seen it on TV? The very first thing you do is say, I am Brooke and I am addicted to cheese, right? Or whatever it is that you have. You have to admit that you have the addiction because once you have an addiction, now you need an intervention, right? So if you love something, you don't need an intervention, but if you're addicted, you do. So once you know you have an addiction, now you have to plan what you would do to overcome it just like any other addict. So for example, if instead of it being food, if I said I was addicted to alcohol, what would the advice be? Number one, don't be around alcohol while you're trying to overcome the addiction, right? So um, make sure that you don't have it in the house, for example, or if it's in the house that somebody locks it away where you don't know where it is. Number two, you tell your friends and family not to offer it to you because if they don't know, they're going to offer it to you. And if you're in a weakened state emotionally, you might say yes. If you have one sip, boom, you're going to see the bottom of that bottle, right? Same with food addiction. I was just talking to someone about this in one of in an appointment today that you know, if she has one bite, she can't stop. I said, I know that's literally what it's been designed to do. You need to understand that there are scientists who work for processed food companies and for fast food companies, and their job is to figure out the most addictive combination of salt, fat, sugar, whatever it takes to make it so that if someone tastes it, they cannot stop. And then once they're done, they cannot stop thinking about it and they want to come back. So you can't taste it, or you will finish that product, and then you will continue on. We just had that happen to someone in the group that I am working hard to help. We're going to have a live meeting soon to really coach her through it, but she was doing really, really well, and then ate some cake on her anniversary, and ever since then, she's been off plan for the past few days because she had that. She was doing well, she ate that cake, and now she's back in addiction mode. We're going to get her out of it, all right? As long as she keeps posting, talking to us, we'll get her back out of it again, but that's really important. A lot of times people will think, I'll just have a little bit and then I'll go back to what I was doing, but it doesn't work that way. Just like an alcoholic, if they go, oh, I'll just have a little champagne and then I'll go back to abstinence. Of course not. You're going to have a little alcohol. It's going to feel so good. You're going to have more. You're going to have more. You're going to have more. So number one, admit you have a problem. Two, make sure you have support. Three, don't taste it. Stay away from it. You need to make a commitment to yourself that you do not eat that anymore, that you are going to commit to your health and not to the addiction. It takes time for the cravings to go away. Usually cravings get worse up until the third week. And then once you get past three weeks of not a taste, it starts to get better. And oftentimes after that, you'll start craving the healthy stuff. But as long as you have the littlest taste, you will continue to be addicted and you will continue to have cravings. So if you see something that you know you're addicted to, turn the other way, get away from it. Don't come towards it. Don't smell it. Just get away from it and make sure that people around you know that you're going to need help and support with that. It's a real struggle because it's a real addiction and it's not your fault and you're the only one who's going to be able to solve it and you're going to have to be abstinent in order to solve it. 